There are quite a lot of voltage regulator chips and here you see a whole bunch of them. Here some more in detail. The a very uh, well known family from 7912 or 7812 now in the middle of the screen. Um, also these power uh, regulators this is in 7815 15 volts and also adjustable regulators and many many more. Uh, but this, vi this video is only about the transistor series regulator. Here you see three types of them. And at first a small demonstration. This is the second circuit from uh, this drawing. Made with a BD139 and a 3055. And I've connected now to that uh, voltage regulator this lamp. And you can see that when I raise the voltage here to approximately uh, 20 volts, the lamp starts to light up. 12 volt car lamp. And we now go to 22 volts and still the car lamp lights up with the same uh, strengths. And that's the principle from the, the this series regulator. So when the voltage varies we have at the output here at the emitter from the 2N3055 always the same voltage. And uh, the thing that does it all is this Zener diode. It's tiny like a little bead and the first very important thing about uh, this regulator is that this Zener diode never may get hot. When it gets hot and it burns out you will find the complete input voltage on the lamp and the lamp surely burns out. That's one important thing that I want to tell in this whole video. There are a few types of uh, regulators. First with one transistor, the second one with two transistors, that's in fact the power Darlington and the third with three transistors. And uh, I often use, almost often use, the second uh, schematic with the BD139 and the 3055. There are a few important things to tell. There are drawbacks from this circuit. The circuit gets warm or hot and it has to do with the input voltage that, that comes here and the output voltage. There is a difference between the output and the input voltage and uh, that difference may be multiplied by the current. So when we have a different voltage here from 10 volts and one ampere of flows uh, 10 watt will be dissipated inside this transistor and it gets hot. So you, have, you need uh, a cooling plate, a heat sink. And of course when you use a too small power transistor it will burn out. It's very important to use transistors with good amplification factors. I want to explain that somewhat later. And of course it takes much more time to make. When the Zener diode burns out, dramatic consequences. The Zener diode must stay cool and the, uh, the good working or bad functioning from the circuit depends on the amplification factor. That's very important. Um, Say we have here an amplification factor from 70 and we have uh, here an amplification factor from 50, 50 here, 70 here. Uh, that is multiplied an amplification factor from uh, 350,000. And that means when you send in into the base from the first transistor 1 milliampere, um, the transistor here, the combination is driven completely into saturation and that means that the maximum current that your voltage, uh, that your power supply delivers, DC power supply delivers, flows in the circuit. When the amplification factor is too low, say for instance 10 here and 10 here, 
we only have uh, 10 multiplied by 10, a complete amplification factor from 100. And that means that when you send in here 1 milliampere into the base, only 100 milliampere can uh, be given by the circuit. So that's important. Use uh, transistors with good amplification factors. These are usable transistors. A very good property from the circuit is that it has an extreme good hum suppression. Uh, the effective capacitor here that the circuit sees, the electronic circuit sees, is uh, decided by the value from the cap multiplied by the amplification factor from uh, this circuit. And in this case, when you use a 100 microfarad capacitor, you will see that your electronic circuit sees a more or less endless capacitance, and that means an extremely good hum suppression. So for audio, this circuit is very usable, and this circuit also. And uh, another important thing to tell is that we always have some uh, voltage drop in the circuit. In this case, that's always one, uh, 0.7 volts, because it's one transistor, silicon transistor. And here it is 1.4 volts, and here it is three times. Uh, a silicon transistor and that's three times uh, 0.7 volts. But more important is the voltage difference between the input and the output for the dissipation. Good properties. Uh, when you use this Darlington, the BD1393 and uh, 355, it has more or less an eternal life on a heatsink, of course. This is, for instance, a good example from such a circuit. When you use this circuit uh, 24 hours a day during a few years, no problems at all. It will always work and, of course, when it doesn't get too hot. The good hum suppression was the second good property uh, and the rest I have already explained. A very important issue is the calculation from this resistor, R. That is the resistor that goes to the base. You'll find it in all the three circuits. And the value from that resistor has a lot to do with the amplification factor. You have to drive in into the base from the first driver transistor a certain current. That current is amplified by the two transistors. And here we have also a current that flows through to the Zener diode. The Zener diode needs a max, uh, an optimal current to function properly. That's very important. And that means that this resistor uh, may not get too high. Also, the resistor may not get too low because then the current gets too, too strong from this to here to the Zener diode. And then your Zener burns out or gets hot. And that's a big risk in this circuit. So, the idea is that the Zener diode um, is, is uh, not calculated or a little bit calculated, but the temperature from your Zener diode is leading. So always feel with your finger whether the Zener diode gets hot or not. So in this case, feel it here. This Zener diode does not get hot, uh, even not warm. It's more or less cool. And that means that it doesn't, doesn't burn out, also not on the longer term, and the whole circuit stays perfectly intact. Feel it, the temperature from the Zener diode with your finger. There are some rule of some values for the, this resistor, resistor R, and uh, that they are 1K up to 2K2 for 15 volt circuits, approximately 4K7 for 30 volt circuits and maximum 10K for 50 volt circuits. This circuit is not suitable for uh, voltages higher than 50 volts. Uh, the current that can flow in that circuit is um, too big. So it is usable maximum to 50 volts at say 2 ampere or so. Uh, 
this I have already explained the importance from the amplification factor, the extreme good hum suppression. So these are all the good properties from this circuit. Use a heatsink. It's advised when you go with a current higher than uh, 2 ampere or 1 ampere. And some a small trick, you can adapt the Zener diode very precisely by connecting a silicon diode in the row here, par, uh, sorry, in series with the Zener diode, and then in a reversed way. And when you use one transistor, uh, use for very low power, use a transistor that has a good amplification factor. That also affects the uh, capacity, capacitance that the electronic circuit sees. So one good advice, do this experimentally, feel the temperature from the Zener diode with your finger when it doesn't get hot and it regulates its Perfect. And the two uh, transistor circuit, the Darlington, always works, is my experience. This transistor has a risk of oscillations, three transistors, due to the very high current amplification. In that case, connect the capacitor from uh, 100 nanofarad here, in, on this location, and also a capacitor from 100 nanofarad here and the capacitor from the same value here, that can damp out the oscillations. You have to do some experiments with small uh, value capacitors, 50 n, 100 nanofarads, to, uh, to damp the oscillations that can occur in this circuit.